Hi guys, this is Pastor Prophet Justin Roberts from End of the Age Bible Prophecy. Today I want to present to you my PowerPoint presentation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. In it you're going to find illustration books in the form of slideshow, you're going to have scripture in the form of sound clips, and you're going to have me voicing over in the form of narration. So I hope you enjoy this slideshow. And I hope you have great revelations from this presentation. God bless you all. Amen. So this chapter is about the Antichrist, who is a clone of Jesus Christ, King William V. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And these are the prophecies that... Jesus Christ fulfilled but the Antichrist will not fulfill stuff like born in Bethlehem uh, be called Emmanuel he'll spend a season in Egypt he will be rejected by his own people uh, and you can go through them and have a look he will speak in parables he'll be <laughs> praised by little children he'll be crucified when actually the Antichrist will receive a head wound so all these prophecies that Jesus actually fulfilled, yet they did not receive him as the Messiah, but the Antichrist will come and not fulfill these. But just by human emotion, the people, the Jews will accept him as the Messiah when really he's the false Messiah. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honour one of another, and seek not the honour that cometh from God only? And even the scripture says that he, I came in my own name, Jesus says. So meaning Jesus, meaning God saves, or the Hebrew, Yah, meaning God, and Shua, meaning saves. So Jesus saves. He came in his father's name, and you received him not. But if another shall come in his own name, William V, him ye shall receive. So even 2,000 years ago, Jesus, obviously they rejected Jesus as their Messiah, the Jewish people. But he made a, well, it's more like a promise, a prophecy, a promise, that another shall come in his own name, who not sent by God, and him you shall receive as your Messiah, the Antichrist. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honour of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably, and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And when the prince came to the kingdom, to Israel, they dubbed him the Prince of Peace, the prince they accepted him he was accepted by the jewish and the palestinian people in equal um, strength now he was the first royal ever to visit israel in what he called a lifelong project for lasting peace exactly what a messiah would do and he being the first royal to visit israel even a hundred years ago from now pretty much the british empire built israel the balfour decoration planted the seed of israel that the jews had a place to live in palestine and yet since them royals that were in power at that time till now the present day no royal has ever visited israel their creation so obviously this would be planned you know william will be seen as like the chosen one the different one the one who's going to bring peace and jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being as was supposed the son of joseph so the antichrist is instead of christ he's a counterfeit he's a replacement so don't look for some guy who's 50, 60 years old and say, oh, he's the false Christ. Prince Charles is a false Christ. No, he's, he's too young. How can you say that he's the counterfeit Christ? The Antichrist is coming at the same age. I mean, William was like 31 when they pulled him out of the 
the air force and they prepared him to be king luke says jesus was around 30 when he began to minister now i mean we <laughs> this was language 2000 years ago we could actually translate that to our language and say he was in his 30s he was in his 30s when he began to minister you know so the antichrist will be in his 30s when he comes and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness now just before prince william was born you could say this guy was like a john the baptist of the false christ benjamin krem came out in may 1982 and he announced to the world news medias and he says that the messiah who he called maitreya was going to be revealed to the world on the next summer solstice which would have been june 1982 now everyone might have thought he was nuts after this happened and they were like well the second coming hasn't happened but what did happen on summer solstice june 21st 1982 well a solar eclipse happened on that day actually the highest point of the sun one of the highest uh, days of the satanic calendar also the summer solstice when they all gather at stonehenge you know the score but what else happened a prince and future king was born on that very day summer solstice june 21st 1982 prince william arthur and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness now oh, they brought out this movie called godsend and in it he said we have per perfected a procedure in which a single cell can be used to create a genetically identical fetus and be reborn yes the antichrist is the clone of clones he is the clone of the jesus christ they've taken blood from the shroud of Turin, which is the cloth that jesus was wrapped in the vatican rome the roman empire babylon the great the king of the north took blood and skin cells from and it was tested to be blood dna and they have perfect and they have perfected a procedure in which they can make an identical fetus and be reborn for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called god or that is worshipped so that he as god sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god now there's two meanings to second thessalonians 2 4 in that it says he the beast the antichrist the spirit of the antichrist will sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god now if you take that as the the he being the spiritual antichrist the beast that comes up from the abysses of the sea sits in the temple of god and if you think of jesus human body being the temple like he says i'll um tear down this temple in three and a half days i will rebuild it now if you look at it from that point of view the the beast the antichrist spirit will sit in the temple of god which means the human body of jesus christ showing himself that he is god and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space now an ice song came down first of all it came out of the constellation gemini which is the twin or the clone the duplicate the two of them and when it was ison was being able to see by the human eye which was early september the illuminati brought prince william out of the military out of his job 
uh, he says goodbye to the RAF after seven years of uh, all this, counterfeiting the number seven again. And they prepare him to be king. Now remember, this is this is eight years ago. Yeah, eight years. I was born again in 2013. So yeah, it's just, just over eight years ago. And so they've been preparing him to be king for eight years. I mean, how many years do you need to be prepare to be king and show him what to do and everything else? So who thinks that Charles is going to be king when they've been preparing William to be king for eight years? I mean, you know, if they put Charles in, he could last another 30 years, maybe. But no, it's William who's the one who prepares to be king. When I came up, Comet Ice Song came down and it was just about to pass the earth and everything else. It's they just all fled to Africa. I mean, all the, the world leaders just fled to Africa when this was coming. This meant something to them, this Comet Ice Song. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And they just brought out a movie called The Gemini Man, which actually just confirms everything I'm saying to you. <laughs> the Gemini Man is the clone man. Comet Ison came out of the constellation Gemini. And if you think about it himself, King William being the clone of Jesus Christ. In the Gemini Man movie, the new one comes and he makes war with the old one. But he's a clone of the old one. Do you get me? Now, William's coming as the false Christ as a copy of him and yet at armageddon it says that they he will go to war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them because he is lord of lord and king of kings so the same thing is going to happen the clone fake christ is going to go war with the return of the real christ at armageddon and it's so it's exactly like the movie the gemini man comet ison came out of there but think about when he was born june 21st 1982 the sun was in Gemini man. So all this links together. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Now, in 1994, they brought out the, the movie, The Lion King, which is obviously Lion of Judah and King being an obviously King. Now, this was directed at William. Uh, the royal family and it says that one day you two are going to be married and of course in 2011 he was going to be married now <clears throat> one thing the parrot in all all of that i believe represents rome because it's it's the colors of rome it has a red beak it has a purple body and babylon the great is clothed in red and purple and babylon the great has power over the kings of the earth meaning rome says or rome has to make william king and so the parrot says one day you two are going to be married and then the lion king which is referring to william i just i'm gonna be a mighty king so enemies beware and then babylon says i've never seen a king or beast with quite so little hair and now you know this movie was brought out when he was 12 years old i believe and yeah 82 yeah 12 years old actually the day of uh <laughs> actually the age of when a human being becomes accountable for their sin around 12 years old they brought out this movie saying one day you're going to be king and they said so little hair now how did they know that when prince william was in his 30s that he was going to start losing his hair a little bit, you know? And the king says, but I'm going to be the main event like no king was before. No king was before. I mean, that's a bold comment considering the empires, the kings, the wars that we've had. But at the end of the day, though, it says in Revelation that the Great Tribulation is going to be like nothing that was before, nothing that would be anyway. It's going to be the worst time of human history. And he says, oh, well, I just can't wait to be king. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, when he does become king, which actually happens in seal number one, the very one of the very first events he actually becomes king william 
Arthur Philip Louis. Now there's a, a legend about King Arthur, you probably all have heard about it, but it says one of the reoccurring aspects of Arthurian literature was the notion that he would one day return in the role of Messiah to save his people. So that so they're saying King Arthur would one day return as a savior, as the Messiah. Now they named King William William Arthur. And Diana would not call him William, she'd always call him Will or Wills. Now if you take the Will away from the I uh, and then you're left with the I A M, which of course is I am. I am Arthur. So what they're saying in hidden in plain sight like the Illuminati do is he is Arthur. He is the return of the King Arthur as Messiah to his people. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So the seven heads represent seven kings. Five have fallen. Now, to understand that prophecy of Revelation, you have to understand that the angel is showing him this in the present tense. Present tense, John, please. Five have fallen. These are the ones that destroyed Jerusalem and the city. Uh, up to 70 AD, they were Galba, Othio, Vitaletius, Vespasian, and Titus five have fallen one is at the time the book of revelation was being written around 90 AD Demetrian Demetrian one is Demetrian but the other it says the seventh king to finish his prophecy has not yet come and when he does come he must continue a short space so when the antichrist is crowned king it's seal number one this is the king coming for a little while and he will be in the time of the rebuilding of Jerusalem, um, the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, whether he has a personal hand in it or whether he just re um, reigns over it or what have you. He will be king during the, the temple being rebuilt and then when he's killed with a head wound and he rises from the dead and he claims to be God, he claims to be the Christ. Then the seventh king becomes the eighth king because he's filled that clone of Jesus Christ. King William will then be filled with the spirit of the Antichrist and he will then be the eighth king and he'll sit in that temple claiming to be God. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean and dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Every prophet warned his people about the Antichrist, about Dajjal, the false messiah. And the prophet 
Noah warned his people. But I, I say to you something that none have said before me. The Antichrist sees with one eye, his left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grape. But your Lord is not one eye. Like I just said, the Antichrist will receive a head wound in which he, he's dead and then he, he rises from the dead and he says his head wound is healed. That all happens in Revelation. It confirms all this in Zechariah 11. It said the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His eye shall be utterly blinded. So it confirms it in Zechariah when it talks about the, the uh, worthless shepherd. But then in Islam religion, it's also said that the El Masih Dajjal, the deceiving Messiah, the Antichrist, will be blind in one eye, which is a great correlation since he receives a head wound in Revelation and he's blind in one eye in Islam. And then they brought out this, this game, they called it the Dark Messiah, all right, for Xbox. And the picture of him, and in fact, one of the pictures that I created to go alongside this in one of the last slides I just did, is more, more, more or less exactly the same. His head, his ears, his neck proportion, his uh, lips, is, is almost like I picked the picture that they used to edit to make this. And in this picture, the Dark Messiah has a big wound across his face and his eye is dark and dried up whatever and you can tell that he's blind so this is what's going to happen he's going to receive his head wound he comes back from but he's going to be blind in one eye one eye woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean and dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened now look at this. You have Prince William with a scar above his eye. Okay, he said he did it on a putting green and someone hit him with a seven iron. Now if you play golf, you know that someone shouldn't be swinging a club, I don't know, bigger than a nine iron or whatever on a green anyway. So it just sounds like a bullshit story that he was trying to actually counterfeit the number seven in his story as if he's the holy one and he says it's his harry potter scar and he says it glows sometimes all right but i think that the illuminati have chosen him they've marked him like that now in the simpsons homer finds a scar on his ass <laughs> And he goes and joins this, I believe, I believe he joins a club they call the Stone Cutters, which is really the Freemasons. They're all dressed in red and purple as well, just like Rome. But um, yeah, but when they find this scar, they say he's the chosen one. And it's right. William, the chosen one, has a scar above his head, just like he will have a head wound and recover from it when he becomes the antichrist and claiming to be god and claiming to be worshipped by the world woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean and dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened between his eyes on his forehead is written the word Disbeliever. And every Mu'min will be able to read it. Every prophet warned his people about the Antichrist, about Dajjal, the false messiah. And the prophet Noah warned his people. But I, 
something that none have said before me. The Antichrist sees with one eye, his left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one eye. In Islam, the Antichrist, the Al Masih Dajjal, has kafir written on his forehead, meaning disbeliever. He also says that he's one eyed. Now, if you take uh, kafir as it's written it can actually someone found not me it that when rotated it can actually make up the eye of horus you know the egyptian eye of horus so in islam kafir on his forehead could actually mean the eye of horus on his forehead okay and then we come to the western nations in america the dollar bill and you see the illuminati pyramid and what is the capstone the capstone is the art uh, the one eye of horus now in the movie i pet goat 2 you see the antichrist coming out all right and what does he have on his head he has a pyramid which is the illuminati pyramid and what else he has the one eye of horus on his forehead so the antichrist is horus Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean and dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. In the Egyptian mythology of false gods, Isis is the virgin that gives birth to Horus, who is a Jesus counterfeit. Horus, you know, rises from the dead, stuff like that, but he's one-eyed one-eyed horus now who give birth to him isis as a virgin all right now the it was given the british stamp of approval the royal stamp of approval that they bring out a fragrance and they call it isis and it's in memory of diana so if they're calling diana isis the virgin which gave birth to horus the the antichrist who is horus Prince William, a firstborn to the virgin. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean and dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. And in basic meaning of them words and symbols, we could bring this forward into our time that isis <laughs> the false terrorist group isis could give birth to horus the fake uh, fret could give birth to the fake savior in general terms isis the fake fret could give birth to horus the fake messiah prince william daniel 7 in the first year of belshazzar king of babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I beheld uh, till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured, and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. 
These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. In this iPad commercial, there's a hidden image. Flex through very fast through these multiple images, and somebody slowed them down, and you got this one hidden image, and I'd just seen it, and it hit me. And it was like, this is just like Daniel 7 talks about the four beasts. You have four people standing here. One of them, the one wearing a crown, is a Prince William lookalike. Um, obviously, he has long hair and he has a crown. And it has ten spikes or ten horns, you could say. Now, that's just like in... Um, Daniel 7 where it says the beast has ten horns and he's the fourth king and he's the he will be the fourth kingdom or he'll be head of the fourth kingdom on the earth the same beast of Daniel and Revelation the the beast which has iron teeth and nails of brass in Daniel it describes his coat of arms of Prince William then I would know the truth of the fourth beast which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. The beast of Revelation and Daniel is the coat of arms of Prince William. Now, like unto a leopard in Revelation, always kind of got me. I was like, what? Because I was looking at a lot of different things. But when it says like unto a leopard, it doesn't say spots of a leopard, body of a leopard, nothing like that. It just says like unto, you know. So I looked, started looking at leopards and what was similar about the coat of arms lion, which you think it is, which is not. If you look closely at these details that Revelation and Daniel reveal, it's not a lion at all. I mean, it looks even like it may have scales, but it's climbing upwards. And lions just don't do that. They don't climb unless it's their life depended on it. Do you know what I mean? But leopards spend their life hanging off a tree. That is their norm for them, but it's not for a lion. So this beast that looks like a lion, but it's like unto a leopard climbing a tree. John's trying to say to us, all right? And then you have all the details. It has a face of a lion. Absolutely, like Revelation 13 says, it has great iron teeth. The, the lion has his mouth open, you can see his teeth, and they're grey, silver, just like iron would be in Daniel 7. It has the feet of a bear in Revelation 13. And if you look at the feet, they are not cats' feet, they are huge, and they have tassels like bears do. And then in Daniel 7, nails of brass now if you look at the nails of this beast they are not white like a cat should be they are red red like brass and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority and it had ten horns i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb. The dragon will give have ten horns, but then he'll give his power 
over to the beast, the Antichrist, William. Daniel says that stand up a little horn amongst them ten horns, which is reference to his age, a young leader standing up in these uh, ten world leaders. And in Daniel it says that he would subdue three kings, which doesn't mean to kill them as such. It just means to subdue, bring under control, stuff like that, maybe imprison them or something like that. So Barack Obama, Satan incarnated, will have these ten horns. He'll give power over to the beast, the Antichrist, William, who is the young horn that rises up among these ten horns. Daniel says he will subdue three of them. But then Revelation says that all these ten horns will go to war with Jesus Christ at Armageddon and, of course, lose. In this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. A reference to the little horn being his age. A uh, young horn among these world leaders, which may be 50s, 60s, whatever. But there you go. He had William, who's still in his 30s now, standing up among them ten horns. Now, the murals that were done on Denver Airport, where it shows this young, blonde, German-type-looking guy bringing peace to all the countries and destroying their weapons and everything else and bringing joy to everyone, is actually a reference to... Prince William when he was younger as you can see the comparison between this stamp that was brought out in Papua New Guinea compared to that and it's just an illustration of him uh, an illustration that Prince William is that that lad on the Denver murals and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. During the last three and a half years of humanity, when the Antichrist rules, it says that the false prophet will uh, cause all to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man could buy or sell unless he has that mark or the name of the beast, William V, or the number of his name, 666. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, the Antichrist, William, already has his mark of the beast. He had the RFID chip implanted in his hand when he was 12 years old, which 12 is the approximate average of the age of accountability. When your body goes from being a child to an adult, then your spirit also, you become from being non-accountable to being accountable for your sin. And so when he was 12 years old, he, he had his RFID chip implanted in him. Now, this is a bit to me like this is just Satan saying to him as a human being or a human clone, whatever. This is more like Satan saying to him, you'll never be saved. You'll always be condemned. Because when Prince William went from the age of non-accountability to the age of accountability, then boom, he was chipped. So he was, he was always... He will always be condemned now. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So six hundred, three score, and six, or six, six, six is the number of a man, which is the number of the beast, which is the number of the Antichrist, which is Prince William, the number of his name. Now, if you take William V as symbols, which all language is symbols anyway, the double V, well, W, which actually should be called double V. I don't know why they called it that. Do you? 
maybe it's because of you know this time no it's not a double u it's actually a double v so if you take the double v and split it then you've got two v's and then you've got the i and let's say the l's are like i's and if you take them as symbols you break it down you can actually rearrange them and it actually says again i am and then it has in roman numerals vi6 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 so it says i am 666 in his name william the fifth here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six now the number of the antichrist is six 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 now if you read about the islam when it says about the dajjal the messiah the false messiah <clears throat> it says that he will come from the island rich of spies and where did spies all originate from london where did money originate from london stuff like that so it's interesting how the emergency number for britain and a few other countries but britain and the british empire and stuff is 999 now if you turn everything upside down like the illuminati like to do you have 666 like 911 i mean that's 911 11 being another number for the illuminati 911 it happened you know uh, and then 911 and then 911 happened and then people don't seem to understand well hang on a minute this is ha this event happened on this day and but yeah it's the same as our emergency phone number you know people don't get to people don't have the brains to see what is what is right in front of their face sorry uh, they don't have the spirit to see what is right in front of their face and instead they just follow what the news channels want them to feel and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And this slide shows Prince William at the gala dinner in London. And as he walks down, everyone's <laughs> praising him and clapping as he comes down. Right behind him, there's a, a holographic image of what looks like a human sort of but demonic spirit actually devouring into the a lamb and what this represents though is the lamb represents jesus and what they're trying to say is that the demonic spirit that will be the antichrist in the last three and a half years will devour the lamb what they're talking about is armageddon so these people actually believe that the antichrist and his human army are going to defeat the real Christ as he returns to earth literally to touch down and rule the world for a thousand years these people actually think that their demonic spirit is going to devour the second coming of Jesus which obviously is totally wrong so this concludes the presentation on the false messiah the clone Prince William King William V so I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I had great revelations from it. Please share this with your social media and everyone else. And please ask for forgiveness of your sins. That's the only way you can be forgiven is if you ask. Who asks, who will receive. And who doesn't ask, will not receive. So make sure there's no sins in your book of life before, well, death basically. But the time is short. And we're running out of time, folks. So please, please, please repent of your sins always. And God bless you all. I've been Pastor Prophet Justin Roberts from End of the Age Bible Prophecy. God bless you all. Amen.